So many of our great American icons are ordinary, everyday things. Things we know, things we trust, things we love because they endure the test of time. Someone once described this notion as an abiding rightness that makes whatever it is unimprovable. No more, no less. Just right in every way, like a pair of Wesco's. For almost a hundred years, the Shoemaker family in Scapoose, Oregon, has built serious, hard-working boots for occupations of every description. But Wesco's are not all about work. Rugged adventurers wear them, motorcycle enthusiasts swear by them, and they're worn as everyday boots just about everywhere. On occasion, you'll spot a pair of Wesco's in a Hollywood film, and being such a striking symbol of hardworking Americana, they found a place on Paris runways as the ironic counterpoint to high fashion. John Henry Shoemaker came out to Oregon in 1903 from Michigan, which was at the time the logging capital of the world. Armed with strong bootmaking skills and a letter of recommendation as proof, Shoemaker headed west, where he could find opportunity and build a future for his young family. In Portland, he found work as a bootmaker, and by 1918, on a proverbial shoestring, he started his own business, Wesco Shoe Company. Wesco was growing strong until the Great Depression. No one needed logging boots and the company was forced to close its doors. Bob Shoemaker, son of Wesco's founder, remembers it well. From the Depression and Dad lost everything. Everything, the home, the business, he lost it all. Except the equipment. Except the equipment. Mm -hmm. John Shoemaker called it as he saw it. We were so flat that we would have had no trouble walking under a duck's instep with a plug hat on. He was down, but not without ideas. John Shoemaker swamped some land he owned for a piece of land in Scapoose, just north of Portland. By 1937, the factory was a two-story, 2,400 square foot operation. Today, it's 16,000 square feet, standing in the very same location. Wesco boots have evolved with the times and customer trends. Well, what they had was an engineer boot, as they called it, which is now our boss boot. Mm -hmm. And the welders wore it because of the sparks and whatnot. If they got down the inside, they wanted something they could kick off in a hurry to get, so they didn't get the hot foot, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And they made, they made lots and lots of engineer boots. And then it just kind of went poof, there wasn't any more, and then come, the motorcycle craze, and they brought it back. Now, third and fourth generation shoemakers lead the Wesco team. We're very niche oriented. I like to be that way. I like to be very custom. I like to be very individual. I like to be very connected to our customers at all times. And that's, that's that grassroots, what I call in the trenches that I like to, like to stay with. All Wesco boots are made in a workshop, tucked right here on a Scapoose hillside. These are skilled artisans who make Wesco boots. They work as a team, hand to hand, step by step. Wesco boots are built with uncompromised, high quality, full grain leather. Using an inferior leather would be a crime. From a pattern, the leather is cut then skive to thin the edges for smooth seams. Some people ask us how Wesco boots fit so well and last so long. The answer is simple. It's all about details. Top facing, ironing, sewing, setting the gussets. A full leather gusset goes not just part of the way, but all the way up to the top of the boot to provide three layers of shin protection. Next, the hardware is installed. Solid brass studs are mounted into grommets so they won't pull out of the leather. A full leather vamp and leather lining provide a double layer of protection. To complete the upper portion of the boot, the counters are permanently formed, making them water and crush resistant. The fitted upper now begins to take final shape. First, 
A full leather insole is nailed to the shoe last. The last is the single most important element in forming the size, shape, and style of the boot. In fact, it will remain in the boot for at least three days to break the leather's memory and reset it to take on its new shape. The assembled upper is pulled over the last at the toe, heel, and instep, and fastened at each of the three stages. Westcos are built for extreme comfort. We know exactly where to place each stitch and shank. They go where the feet need them the most. The leather vamp is turned out and glued. Next, our craftsmen attach the midsole. The vamp is then pressed onto the midsole and trimmed. The midsole is nailed at the heel, stitched to the vamp, and nailed through the arch area. This seals the boots from the outside elements and gives them some flexibility. The outsoles are then attached and stitched to the midsoles. It takes strength and years of training to be the person who stitches the soles. Next, the heels are carefully attached. Soles and heels are trimmed and sanded to the proper contour before being inked and buffed. At the finishing stage, the shoe last is pulled and the boots are ready for their final inspection. The materials used in construction add to the comfort and longevity of the boots. Steel is used where another bootmaker might use plastic. Leather is always used instead of cork. Customers know Westco will never cut corners. Another thing Westco customers know is that they can extend the life of their worn boots by having them rebuilt. This is not just a routine outsole replacement. More than half the boot is removed and replaced with all new materials. Take a look, before and after like new. One boot at a time, 155 steps. It's a respectful, painstaking process that has become the Shoemaker family's American tradition. If it wasn't made in America, it wouldn't be Wesco. This is the Wesco story, a very American story of quality that has endured a serious test of time.